But first, Duval Schools is still working to land a permanent superintendent. The former superintendent, Diana Green, took a leave at the beginning of June this year and officially retired in July amidst a wave of teacher misconduct complaints. Will Brown, a reporter with Jacksonville Today, has been following the story, and Will is here with me now. Will, how are you? I am great. Good morning. Good morning. And listen, you at home, yes, I'm talking to you, you can join the conversation. Give us a call. 549-2937. You can tweet us at FCC on air. First Coast Connect at WJCT.org. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram. We are here for you and asking you to join the conversation. So, Will, um, when I was beginning this, this conversation, I started off by saying um, former superintendent Diana Green took leave at the beginning of June this year and officially retired in July amidst a wave of teacher misconduct complaints. That is is an oversimplification of the situation when it comes to uh, Dr. Green and her tenure uh, as a sup- as superintendent. Can you kind of fill in the blanks for me a little bit? Well, a lot of these blanks were started by uh, my wonderful but departed Jacksonville Today colleague, Claire Heddles, who did some outstanding reporting. In short, uh, there were a number of teachers, I think four, uh, during the, the second half of the 22-23 academic year who were placed on mis- who were placed on leave for a variety of misconduct issues. Uh, one was arrested and, and, and charged. Who was he has since pled not guilty. Uh, and after he was arrested, he went into re- he took retirement. Others were for just comments that were said in the classroom. Uh, and school board member uh, Lori Hershey says that what took place at Douglas Anderson uh, School of the Arts uh, was the game changer for her in terms of uh, Dr. Diana Green's tenure as uh, superintendent of, of Duval County Public Schools. Uh, you know, there, when, when Dr. Green was forced out, uh, or, excuse me, when Dr. Green was reti- when, re- took retirement, excuse me, um, earlier this spring, um, you know, uh, some school board members even mentioned like the shooting that took place at Reigns High School in 2018 as, a re- as justification that she's not keeping children safe. That was what they were saying. Yeah, all of this sounds really trumped up. And I, and I, I, I would just say that uh, I, uh, as a parent in Duval County. As I am too. Um, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm much older than you, though. So <laughs> I'm, like, oh, I'm about to go back on you. You're a seasoned um, saint. I, I'm a seasoned parent. I don't have children in Duval County schools right now. All my kids have graduated. But um, three of my kids went to uh, Douglas Anderson. And one specifically of the people that were removed out of the classroom uh, and and I, I would say that, like, you know, back in the day, like, you know, we're talking about, um, man, 2015, maybe even before that, like, I did a lot of volunteer work at Douglas Anderson, and I worked with a lot of students, um, and I would hear comments about this teacher uh, w- way back then, right? So I guess what the point I'm trying to make is that uh, this, one of the teachers that was removed out of the school, uh, everybody knew what was going on at least the, the all the students that i talked to and including my kids knew that like this person was not uh you know was 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 being a little extra in the classroom being inappropriate in the classroom i won't say that like they knew specifics of it but i would just say that like there was a lot of inappropriateness in 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 with this individual so that w- predated uh Dr. Green's tenure as uh, superintendent. So using something that predated her, as well as like going all the way back to 2018 with the shooting at Reigns, um, it just feels like, you know, from an outside view, uh, that these charges were somewhat an excuse to push forward an agenda. Well, you know, this spring, a number, the the people who supported Dr. Green, um, just from the observations that I had sitting in school board meetings, uh, were a multi-generational, multiracial, multicultural background of people who believed that she was doing fantastic work for Duval schools. Um, You know, it was everyone from the NAACP to uh, organizations that were trying to curb gun violence um, to pastors who supported her. Um, even former Congresswoman Corrine Brown came into the school board and I think she said out of a one to 10 scale that Dr. Green deserved a 10 plus mm-hmm. it was one of the few times I saw a bit of a chuckle from Dr. Green. 
um, about that conversation. You know, there are obviously others who had criticisms, some of which were about keeping children safe, about Douglas Anderson. And and some um, of the complainants had uh, took issue with the perceived lack of transparency from the district from a financial perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not to say, like, like everything that I was saying is not, is not to say that, like, there weren't valid critiques. I'm just saying uh, that uh, pinning uh, teacher misconduct that has been going on for years to a, a superintendent and, and making that the reason uh, seems like there has to be other things that were involved in it, other other issues that people had that, that I don't know, like, I, people haven't spoken to. You know, there hasn't... I'm putting you in a tough spot, you, you, I know, you, you, I, because, <laughs> because like, there as, as a reporter, there are things that you know and facts that you can back up and then things that are unknown. Correct. Um, and things that you cannot back up factually. And here at WJCT, we deal in facts, facts. and not in uh, innuendo and, and all of that. I'm merely saying, um, so I'm not so I'm not asking you to to comment on uh, rumors. I'm merely saying uh, or asking uh, what are the concrete things that have been pointed to as to why she was pushed out? I mean, really, the, the Douglas Anderson situation was was really what um, you know, led four members of the school board um, because it was a four to three vote that that got rid of that that led to Dr. Green ex that led to the school deciding board deciding to leave, right? Accepting exactly. her her mm -hmm. retirement after five years. Um, you know, she she has not finished working. She's now the CEO of the Children's Literacy Initiative. Um, but I've I've heard from people in town. She's still been in town uh, over the last few weeks, over the yeah. last few months, um, doing big things. Um, so, but the Douglas Anderson situation really seems to have been uh, a tipping point. A tipping point. Yeah. yeah. And would it be safe to say that the uh, four members of the uh, uh, school board that uh, had issue with Dr. Green that they are in line with Governor DeSantis's way of thinking as far as education is concerned. No, actually, no? Um, one of the people who did uh, approve. One of the four, uh, I, the current chair, Dr. Kelly Coker, uh, you know, has proudly stated like she's on the figurative um, um, to defeat list mm -hmm. of school board members uh, that that has floated out there throughout the state um, of school board members from a variety of districts who are coming up for election or reelection um, in 2024. And, and Coker has expressed a bit of, of pride that she is on that uh, on that list of people to defeat. And we've got a, a comment from Tom on Facebook. He says, uh, with the growing influence of Moms for Liberty, uh, with, with the growing influence of Moms for Liberty, we need a superintendent that will stand up for their teachers. Dr. Green just sacrificed uh, a dedicated and innovative teacher, Amy uh, D'Onofrio, D'Onofrio, excuse me, when there was a backlash against her empowering students uh, during the name change process at their school. Uh, I do know a little bit about uh, about this because this was uh, a story that I reported many, many years ago about the change from uh, Nathan Bedford Forest High School into, or no, excuse me, this was the Lee, Lee High School. Yes. This was the change of uh, Lee High School into uh, Riverside High School, correct? correct? Um, and if I remember correctly, uh, uh, the teacher in question was really advocating for the kids to have a voice and and speak out against this. Yes, and I think she had like a Black Lives Matter flag in the classroom, and that was apparently a problem. Yeah, and I think if I recall correctly, again, again, Claire Heddles did some fantastic reporting for us at WJCT about it. But I want to say that um, after the flag was unfurled in the classroom, and she accepted a settlement from the district, and everyone's kind of kept it moving. Yeah. And we're going to go to the phones. We've got Elizabeth on the uh, west side. Elizabeth, how are you this morning? Hi, good morning. Good morning. I'm doing well. How are you guys? Good. I'm actually over on the intercoastal west. I'm uh, calling because I think that this whole situation around Dr. Green is just tragic. Um, you know, I think she's been, she was a great champion for our schools and our students. And when you bring divisive politics, like Moms for Liberty has done on our school board. Um, you see these agendas move forward without regard for our local um, voice, our local control, um, the wishes of the community. 
we've already seen we, the school board just passed restorative justice program, and um, one of the board members went to the Department of Education to try to get that program investigated. Um, and it's not the will of our community, the things that they're doing. I'm part of um, a group called Public School Defenders. And we're working really hard to make sure that our public schools are protected and that the community knows the truth about what's happening with these um, kind of witch hunt political agendas going on. Elizabeth, thank you so much for calling in and your comment. Um, Will, uh, who on the school board is aligned with Moms for Liberty? Well, we're confident that April Carney is, is one who was elected to the school board with a strong assist uh, from from Moms for Liberty. Uh, Moms for Liberty has said that they are a, a, a organization that advocates on on behalf of children, um, and they say that they they put children first. That is what they say. Um, I think last week when Governor DeSantis was here in Jacksonville, they were wanted to discuss COVID policies and and. Uh, you know, not having the government force people into uh, taking COVID vaccines, including the new vaccine. It's interesting that they don't want to force people into taking the COVID vaccine, but they do want to force people to not be able to read certain books. It's sort of like we can, uh, we don't want uh, to be forced to do this, but yet we want to force you to do that, right? Like it's, it's, uh, holding the two things together, like it just at times doesn't make sense. You know, I saw someone um, at the Governor DeSantis event uh, one week ago with a T-shirt, a Navy T-shirt that said, my body, my child, my choice, my rights. Uh, that That is their perspective as a parent. Um, I mean, I, I don't hide the fact that I'm the parent of a Duval County public school child um, or Duval County public school student. Uh, um, and that helps inform my reporting. I don't, I don't editorialize at all, but I'm on Duval County public school campuses all the time, either as a parent, um, you know, students at my child's school don't know me as a reporter. They know me as so-and-so's dad. Yep. Um, so people are entitled to their perspective, but April Carney is definitely one who, um, is, is, has ties to moms for Liberty. They're, uh, I think it'd be unfair for me as a reporter to say that there are others who are connected with Moms for Liberty um, because I don't know with 100% certainty. Sure. But I, I'm, I'm confident about uh, uh, board member Carney's connections to yeah. the organization. Uh, so what's going on with the the, the hunt, the, the, the search for? And, and actually, before I do that, let me just say that you listeners can call in and join this conversation. You can call us at 549-2937. You can tweet us at FCC on air, First Coast Connect at WJCT.org. And you can hit us up on Facebook or Instagram. Um, and I, I was just asking you, Will, um, so what exactly is going on with the hunt for uh, a superintendent? So the superintendent, if you'd like to be the superintendent of Duval County Public Schools. <laughs> no, sir, um, not at all. I, I, there's, I, no, sir, me either. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the app- applications are open tomorrow. Um, they open tomorrow and will be open until October 13th. Uh, the Florida School Board Association is, is, is facilitating the search on behalf of the school board. Um, they have told the school board members that they will not filter anyone. So if you're a first year uh, English language arts teacher who thinks you can be the superintendent of schools and you apply and you fit all the credentials uh, and you fit a uh, complete an application, it will be submitted to the school board. Will you probably get the position? Almost assuredly not. Um, but, you know, there, we, we do have a list of uh, the qualifications, the, the, the minimum qualifications and the preferred qualifications on our website, jackstoday.org. Um, I think for those of, those of you who, who followed uh, FCC on air on Twitter, there's a photo that, um, that was placed this morning um, that's actually a, a school board member holding up the qualifications during Tuesday's board workshop. So if you zoom in on that picture, you can read every single word of the qualifications that they're looking for in the next superintendent. I am 100% sure that I am not qualified (laughs) and would not want that job for anything at all. Oh my goodness. No, 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 no. All right. So we're going to go to the phones. We've got Stanley on the North side. Stanley, my friend, how are you this morning? Oh man, I'm doing fantastic. And hello to everybody involved. Um, 
my first concern, uh, I want to send prompts out to uh, Dr. Green uh, for the city of Jacksonville injustice. Uh, they did Miss Green wrong. Uh, okay, uh, number two. I want to know why, when we going to take politics out of education? You're doing a disservice to the students, the, all the students. Students are having a hard time just dealing with their parents. They don't need to be dealing with all this going on in these school, uh, in the school system. Sorry about that. And this, uh, this, this politics need to go. Thank you. Thank you, Stanley. Uh, I think I don't. Th- I don't think politics are ever going to get out of uh, schools. I think when you look at uh, um, the history of the United States of America, uh, I mean, some of our biggest Supreme Court cases around race and segregation and desegregation, um, all of that stem from the the, the schoolhouse, um, from education. Uh, and I think that education is is. I I I, I hear what you're saying, Stanley. I wish uh that could be true that we could take politics out of uh schools but history tells me that that's not going to happen and that actually like where we are right now our school grounds uh our battleground uh for for many different um i don't know i i kind of don't like the term culture war um because it it makes it sound like the culture is not um as important as politics you know it seems like an offshoot but it's actually fully a part of the main, you know, political clash. Uh, but we can see that, like, the uh, those wars are playing out here with, with groups like Moms for Liberty and groups that oppose Moms for Liberty. Uh, we, we, we see all across the country the last couple of years when it came to COVID, like, that it was a, the number one, you know, the first battleground about uh, masking and all those type of things. So, so yeah, uh, I, I totally hear, uh, hear what you're saying, but I don't think that that's going to change in, anytime soon. And we've got a caller on the line, I think. Uh, uh, it's not coming through yet. But if you want to uh, join the conversation, you can call in at 5492937. You can tweet us at FCC on air. First Coast Connect to WJCT.org. And the caller is here. We've got Philip on the west side. Philip, how are you this morning? Philip, you there? Philip, Philip, Philip. All right, so Philip's not there. If you uh, call back, we will get you on. Um, so, Will, when it comes to the hunt for a superintendent, are are there any candidates that we know that are going to apply, people that we would know that, that are going to apply? I wish I could say yes. Um, uh, but it, it was a bit of a, a amusing moment, at least to me, uh, during Tuesday's board workshop. Uh, when the school board members noted that, you know, people will ask about who will apply for this position uh, once they start applying. And I nodded vociferously and, and let them know, of course, I will be sending in a public records request. It's yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a guarantee. I mean, is my name Brown? Am yeah. I tall? Oh. Yes, you. I I can affirm that your name is Brown. And for listeners who don't know, he he, he is tall. <laughs> <laughs> so I will be sending in a public records request. Um probably multiple times a week. Uh, so I do not know who will apply, but that was one of the concerns uh, initially of the board that they did not want to become a Broward County 2.0. Um, and what's happened down in Broward County is uh, their superintendent uh, left and it the board tried to open up the superintendent search and they did not get the quality of candidates that they were expecting. Uh, and that led to, uh, you know, Broward, the Broward School Board they eventually found a superintendent, but the process was longer and more convoluted than they initially thought. Uh, the Duval School Board was cognizant of that, and so one re- that was one reason why they some members of the board, um, I think uh, Warren Jones was one, and I think Charlotte Joyce was another, uh, who this week were looking to see if maybe they could slow down the search a little bit so they could get a candidate to come in at the end of the year instead of coming in mid-year. Uh, but... You know, Tuesday's workshop wasn't something where they could take action, but they did come to the consensus that they wanted to keep the timeline that that, that was established uh, earlier and had been communicated to the community that uh, the new, you know, the applications will be open until mid October. They'll select some fi- semi finalists in October. The finalists will be here in Jacksonville if the timeline stays as 
currently indicated. Uh, the second weekend in Jackson, excuse me, the, November 16th and 17th. And then, um, you know, I hope no one's going out of town for Thanksgiving because the new superintendent may be selected on Tuesday, November 21st, which is two days before the Thanksgiving holiday. Yeah. And we've got a comment on Facebook. It's uh, thank you for the conversation. Alan will elections matter. And there are potential there could potentially be six of the seven board seats on the ballot next year. Is, is that accurate? There is a. I want to say there's a lawsuit that's that's being adjudicated at the moment about whether, uh, in terms of the maps, the redistricting maps, again, elections matter. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that, that 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 part of the comment is 100 percent. Elections matter. Yes. The part I'm asking is about like <laughs> our uh, six or six uh, of the seven chairs. My understanding is four are definitely going to be up for re-election and then two others, depending on some lawsuits, may also be up for re-election depending on how how that goes. So it's possible that six of the seven are up, but my understanding is four definitely are. Yeah, I think the the uh, the thing that like uh, we haven't really, or the, the person that we haven't really talked about a, a whole lot in, in this conversation uh, that kind of looms over it all is Governor DeSantis and his willingness to actually get involved in school boards, which feels, uh, I don't know, I, I don't, I, uh, reporting in Jacksonville for the last 15 years, I, I don't r- remember that actually happening with a governor before, being as active as DeSantis has been uh, throughout the state with, with, with school boards. Uh, and also with the, you know his mandates with education with his you know his don't say gay and his uh, uh, laws around uh, or his you know edicts around COVID all all of that type of stuff like he's very involved in it and also like the changing of the standards of like what can be taught in schools and so forth and so on it's a lot and it feels like all of those things puts. Uh, profession of teaching in the state of Florida in a very precarious situation. And I'm wondering if, if, if we're seeing that across the board. Well, I talk to teachers uh, throughout the region. Um, most of them just are so, will say, Will, this is off the record. Like, come on. Um, and they will tell me that the teaching profession has been made more challenging in recent years. And this isn't just, you know, people who lean on the liberal side of the perspective. This is people who are conservative as well. We're like, yeah, it's it's more challenging um, because there's been so much um, so many people trying to put their thumb on the scale in terms of what is taught or what can be taught or what's allowed to be taught. Uh, so it's you know, and it's not just um, it, it's not just educators in the Duval district. I, I go a lot of different places um, and, and we'll hear from educators and and. Just kind of, usually it's like a wry shake of the head of like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot tougher now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I, I wonder if people who have the same type of qualifications as Dr. Green uh, nationally look at like what's happening uh, in Florida as it concerns uh, education and maybe would think twice about coming to Florida because of, of the political uh, unrest. Well, that's what happened in Broward County, and that's what the Duval District was concerned about, was that they weren't getting the the applicants that they thought they might. Um, now, do, granted, Dr. Green and uh, the last two superintendents of the uh, full-time superintendents have been in-state superintendents. Uh, Dr. Green came from Manatee County, and Dr. Vitti came up from M- Miami-Dade. Um, so, but also, here's the thing. A number of the the bigger districts, because the, the school board has indicated they want someone who has experience with at least 25 in a district with at least 25,000 students, um, as well as some in experience in their career of working in rural, urban and rural, um, excuse me, rural, urban and suburban um, uh, settings. There are not a whole lot of districts in this state that have those qualifications that don't have a new superintendent. The right. number of uh, appointed superintendents in this state uh, that has turned over over the last two and a half years is more than a dozen. Yeah. All right. We're going to go to the phones and Philip uh, from the West side is here. Philip, how are you doing this morning? 
Very good. I wanted to comment on uh, what the uh, caller said about uh, taking politics out of the education system and to state that the reason why DeSantis and his legislature have politics in it is they want to keep people dumb enough to vote Republican. And on a more uh, important note, teachers know when students are failing. To let a student fail is deplorable. What we need to be doing is making retired teachers tutors to help these students, to keep them from failing, because a failing student is a failing society. All right, Philip, thank you so much for your call and comment. We also have a comment on Facebook. Uh, Parental rights, it's from Lisa on Facebook. Parental rights, as fermented by DeSantis, is a misnomer. It only applies to a fringe minority of extreme far-right groups like Moms for Liberty and the white supremacists whom they align. Those who want full quality education for our children, which prepares them to be competitive in the world and to be able to coexist with others who are different from them, we are a majority. And our rights have been denied in service to political pandering, uh, to ignorance, racism, and bigotry. Um, and so that, that comment is from Lisa. Uh, Lisa, I would uh, just uh, refer back to uh, the earlier comment um, from Kate, which said elections matter, you know? And, you know, I've, I've spoken in professional and personal capacities with a number of uh, PTA presidents um, in in Duval County. I spoke with one last week. Um, And we should we we should do the disclaimer here, though. We should do the disclaimer (laughs) that um, that your wife is a PTA president. She she is. Um, (laughs) um, Yes, I am married to a PTA president. Um, She she does a lot for for our child's school. you know, uh, but the person I spoke with was not my wife about this. Uh, it was last week at a superintendent search uh, community meeting at Reigns High School. Uh, the PTA president of a North Side Elementary School, uh, you know, told me that, you know, some of the she really started to get really more involved in her child's school because she saw, quote, policies that are race related that our legislature and governor are doing. Close quotes those are her words yeah so you know when it comes to this uh uh subject um it it feels like uh what parents need to do is get active and involved yes um and 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 make sure that their voice is heard not just uh in the uh ballot booth but in any conversations that are going on in the school uh, and around, like, you know, if you don't like the direction that the schools are going in, the only way that it changes is if you show up and you show your power for either side, whatever your belief is, because uh, it, it seems pretty clear that um, one side of the argument uh, is showing up and is making changes. Uh, and if you don't go out and make your voice heard, um, then change will happen and you'll be left behind and not not actually be able to affect that change got to be in it to 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 actually make change and that is what that parent told me um when when i spoke with her last week you know she said you know i can't i can't sit on the sidelines i I want to be involved right on will brown reporter for jacksonville today and my friend thank you so much for coming in today thank you for having me 